and today we have two exciting new full-frame cameras to share with you. The versatile Z6 II, including increased processing power, new autofocus engine, greater buffer capacity, faster frame rates and stills, 4K 60p in video, dual hard slots, and the ability to attach a vertical battery. Welcome to my first wedding day with an Icon Z6 II and maybe even the first wedding that an Icon Z6 II has ever photographed. This is a pre-production unit, which means it only gets better from here. I've been using this camera for about a week and a half now and I have really been enjoying the experience and it feels like a final camera. So if anything does get improved for the final firmware, I'm, I'm happy to have that. Uh, the main thing for wedding photographers, I think, is the autofocus upgrade. All of the autofocus just works better as well as the introduction of a new autofocus mode. Wide autofocus with face and eye detect within it, which means that wherever this little box goes, you can move this box around with the, the joystick on the back here. The face and eye detect only work within that box, which means if you have a couple in the center of the frame and you have a lot of people all at different distances, down the side that you can just select that it only does face and eye on the specific people that you want to focus on. For wedding and portrait shooters, I really do feel like this is an incredibly useful feature and not one that I expected to appear on this camera. Outside of that, all of the autofocus modes just work better, faster, more accurately. And I have a lot more trust in the autofocus system when I'm out there in the field. Uh, a lot of wedding photographers specifically that used an Nikon Z6 will tell you to change this F1 button that's right under your index finger here to object tracking. So if there ever is an environment that you want to have more control over, you simply hit that button and then you can either just half press the shutter and the box will track with whatever you, you stuck it to. And object tracking works faster and better and it just seems smoother and, and stickier to the, to the actual thing that you, you put it on uh, on this camera than it did on the original Z6. The other huge addition for wedding photographers, two card slots. For me, the Z6 with one card slot was an amazing all around camera. On a wedding day, I was still a little bit nervous to use it as a main camera body. Uh, XQD card is very unlikely that anything's ever going to happen to it, but to have that backup redundancy in your camera at all times really does just give me the peace of mind. And if you follow this channel, you'll know that I do backups of backups of backups of backups because it is a once in a lifetime day and you can't go back and reshoot it. So yeah, let's head to the wedding day with the new Nikon Z6 II. Today we're doing both photography and hybrid coverage, which means we're doing photography and also a highlight film. Uh, Nikon really does excel above all others when it comes to one, the usability and being able to physically do that on the camera body, and two, the buffer clears so quickly. Um, we're picking Tim up at a different airport because of weight and balance and center of gravity and, and fuel and a bunch of other technical things. And now we are approaching the island, but due to other technical things, Jeff and I have to be let out in order for the helicopter to land properly on the island because of the, the wind conditions, and they come back for us. Oh, I can't find a pocket for <laughs> In the middle of nowhere. And Jeff Mack is enjoying a Red Bull, the first wedding officiant sponsored by Red Bull. Because my Nikon Z6 II is still a pre-production unit and Nikon basically was like, don't shoot anything super important with it. And I've been shooting it for about a week and a half now and I've had absolutely no issues. So I'm comfortable running it as my second camera today, but I am running the Nikon Z5 as my main camera. Here we are on the island. A brief interruption here to tell you a few of the other things and a few of the other reasons why I really do enjoy the Nikon Z series for wedding photography. One, 
Most of the lenses are relatively light and easy to carry with you. Uh, as a wedding photographer, to have them in my bag, I don't need a 1.4 or 1.2 prime in every situation. I don't need to have a 1.2 24mm lens, for instance. It is nice to have a main lens, so maybe that 51.2 is kind of a main lens on your main camera. But to have your secondary primes in 1.8s that have been designed as professional grade products and that are also easy to carry and are also relatively inexpensive in the grand scheme of kind of all photography photography things. It really just is a great lens ecosystem as of right now, and I feel like it is very much tailored towards the wedding photography market. To speak to cost for a moment, the cost to get into the Nikon Z ecosystem is really, really reasonable for the quality of products that you're getting. So you really are getting a lot of performance for every dollar spent, which I think is really, really cool. And it, it's a cool place that this camera and the Z series in general have kind of been placed within the market. And, and I think it really suits the wedding photography market. The other main thing that wedding photographers need is good low light performance and this does a really phenomenal job. And the files that the Nikon Z6 II creates really do feel feel nice to work with. You get everything that you would want a file to do, it will do it and it won't start to break apart and it'll just give you a nice finished product at the end of the day. Even if you might screw up a little bit on site and you might have to push it a little bit harder or if you're just in a crazy dynamically rich situation that you know that you always have access to maybe those highlights and those shadows and, and the colors that maybe you're not seeing quite in real life because there's no direct light on them. That the files captured are better than real life in a lot of situations. Uh, one last thing I'll touch on, and I, I find that this is specifically true with the 24 to 70 f2.8, as well as the 70 to 200, as well as really all the prime lenses, I guess. So anything with, a, with an S on it, I believe this to be true for. All of these lenses are designed with art in mind, that they're designed to be technically great, but they're also designed with an artistic element as well, and that's not forgotten moving into mirrorless. I found this 100% with the digital SLR Nikon equipment that I shot, specifically the 85 millimeter F 1.4G, that it created an image that really just felt nice. It felt more artistic. And I find that all of the Nikon, the Nikkor S glass, really brings that artistic element in, in a very nice balance with being technically correct, that I don't feel like a lot of other companies are paying attention to, and I really appreciate that Nikon and the Z series specifically specifically do pay attention to that. So I would say that all of the autofocus has been updated. Every single setting that you're going to use is faster, more responsive, and, and more sticky. One of the additions is this wide box, which basically means it's it's wide L autofocus, and you can do face and eye detect only within that box. So as you can see, Jeff's face, Tim's face, within the box, anything outside of that, it will ignore. And maybe on this island, not a huge deal. There's only, what, six of us here, but on a regular wedding day when there's lots of different people around and you really do wanna make sure that the face and eye detect are working on the people that you want it to be working on, uh, this is kind of the best. And you can also move the red box around the screen, which I didn't do here, but you can just do that with the, the back joystick that your thumb will be on. A few straight out of camera JPEGs from the flight in, and if you notice anything off to the either left hand side or the bottom right hand side, uh, as you can see in that image there, that's actually the glass from the helicopter. The window doesn't quite open in, as much as I wanted it to, but again, straight out of camera JPEGs, absolutely no editing done. Off camera flash, super easy to set up, and you just go into the settings here, flash, sync speed, go up here, and now you can use high shutter speed, whatever shutter speed you want to use um, with your flash unit. So I think I have my flash set to something like one slash, I'm going to say one slash four. Tim's giving the thumbs up and then Tim's getting, Tim's disappearing from the photo to make that the final image. And I should also mention that that's an edit from the JPEG as well that I haven't gone into the raw files yet for these uh, images. I will also say that the autofocus is making much better decisions when just kind of let to do its own thing on, on wide AF. Uh, also, the reason that the face is lit up green there, the box goes green whenever you're in AFS uh, kind of single shot mode. So it's just kind of locking focus there, which is fine by me because nobody's moving. And also the, the focus, I guess the depth of field, I'm using a 24 to 70 with this camera right now. So I have more than enough depth of field to work with. Moving into object tracking. A lot of Z series photographers will set object tracking to the F1 button, which is right under your index finger. Pops up this box, whatever you put this box on, if you half press down on your shutter button or you hit the AF on button, it'll just track with whatever you put it to. And it, it seems very sticky on the new camera. Definitely a little bit of an upgrade. It seems just faster overall. That said, in the environment that we're currently in, uh, I guess that this is all, you, you kind of use whatever autofocus mode works the best for the environment that you're in. And right now, there's no real need for object tracking in this. I just kind of wanted to show you a quick little demo of it. 
the blackout that you're seeing, basically when the, the I take a frame, the screen goes black, it seems like it's a lot less when you're actually in the EVF. When you're watching it back on video, it feels a little bit more pronounced, but it's really not, it doesn't cause me a problem really at all in the field. Now moving into autofocus continuous, which has really seen a great upgrade. Uh, one other thing you might notice and that I mentioned uh, on the video that I posted earlier this week, that if the face or the eye detect doesn't appear to be 100% on the subject that it's tracking and it's near and it's kind of lagging in and out of it, um, in my testing, everything is in focus that it's really prioritizing the actual focus and the capture and then showing you the overlay after. I don't know what the technical is on that or the reason why, but it really just is working in my experiences so far with the camera. As you can see, the straight out of camera JPEG is really phenomenal and I find a lot of the time I edit my, my raw files to just look like the JPEG and how my camera just processed it. As you can see on the right hand side there, I shoot on high or usually extra high D lighting, which gives my, my JPEGs a little, little something extra. Now moving into higher frame rates, uh, as a wedding photographer, I never really should have to go past continuous low. Um, I'm going to go to continuous high sim simply for the, the champagne pop. And it tracks perfectly with face detect going through those all those frames really really quickly a few more images to to end off on uh, as i guess you can kind of see this is the middle of the day so we aren't even really anywhere close to golden hour yet and it's starting to look really really nice i also shoot my camera on shade mode a lot the house the the house shade not the cloud shade and i feel like the nikon color palette complemented by that specific white balance really does bring out the best in skin tones uh, in my environments i'm always shooting People are usually either in shade or even if they're not in shade, their faces are usually in shade. So I'm always white balancing specifically for faces. That's it. That's all. Fourth phase art of flight. We're on our way off of the island and I'm just framing up as many shots as I can because basically once you frame something, it's, you're past it. So you kind of just spray and pray out here and hope that you get something good and you can kind of predict what's coming, but it's, it's quite challenging. If you have any questions about the Nikon Z6 II, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'm doing my best to get back to everyone over the next couple of weeks before the camera is officially out there into the world. And I am very happy with the camera and I hope that you will be as well. Uh, also, all the video footage you're seeing is straight out of camera as well. Still doing that D light on either high or extra high as well as my shade white balance. Um, that's through the window of the helicopter, which is why it's a little dirtier. And ending our day here, this is the absolute last frame that I took on this wedding day, and I am quite proud of that frame specifically. There you have it, the first wedding, my first wedding, and maybe the first wedding for the Nikon Z6 II. Hope that you enjoyed this video. It really is a great camera to use, and the autofocus improvements make my life so much easier, as well as, as silly as it seems, having these, these two card slots really does make my life a lot happier overall. So thanks for joining me. If you have any questions about this camera, please put them in the comments below. I'm going to be making a number of videos about the Nikon Z6 II, both this pre-production unit as well as the production models when they are available. So drop any questions, comments, concerns in the comments below. And tell me maybe if I should retire. This is, this is my wedding shirt. You've probably seen this in about 100 wedding day videos. And uh, the reason that I actually originally bought this, maybe this is a, a nice little segue. My Nikon D5, when I bought it, didn't have this beautiful little little flip screen. I guess they still don't, but there's been other cameras that have had this screen prior to this camera right here. Uh, but I actually used this shirt with the light and dark patches to, to help me focus when I was doing video and I was out in the field on wedding days doing photo and video coverage that I was actually able to see my focus points better um, because of the checkered pattern. And then I just kept buying the shirt and I feel like this is maybe close to the 10th iteration of the shirt since then. I wore it every single day in Antarctica, so my friends make fun of me for this being the Antarctica shirt. Rumor has it that Drake became Drake by crossing the Drake Passage. Uh, when he began his adventure, he was Aubrey on Degrassi, and after two days at sea, he landed in Antarctica as Drake. So this, this shirt here, it's a base layer for Antarctica. It is a wedding shirt, and it's, um, it'll help you technically focus if you don't have the, the flip screen of this uh, Nikon. Z6 II, that's my story for today. And I have nothing more to talk about. So that's all for today. I guess click the, there's, there's 
things here that you can click and you can go watch them. Watch this one. This is the, the, the travel and landscapes photography tutorial with the Nikon Z6. It is very, very long. It's three hours, but we go to Iceland and we go to Japan. Japan's my favorite place in the world. That's it. That's the one place that throughout all of the past couple of months that I've been like, I don't really want to go anywhere else, but I really do want to go back to Japan. So hopefully, hopefully that's a possibility soon. Love to come back. Love to take some more Z series pictures in, in its home.